Welcome, everybody, to the Mission Thriving Life podcast, a weekly podcast from Mission Community Church designed to help you thrive, not just survive through the challenges of life, leadership, and faith. My name is Nick. This is Joel. We are going to be your hosts today, and um, this is going to be a little bit different episode. I know it's only episode three, but it's going to be different from the other two in that we have some special guests. Yeah. Uh, You want to tell us about that, Joel? Yeah, so we're actually going to just do a little bit of an intro. we got some things we want to let you know about, and then we're going to actually disappear. We're going to do like a disappearing act. Yeah. We'll like disappear, and then two other guys are going to appear. Yeah, Yeah. they're going to appear. I like it. um, Just for social distancing purposes. And they're actually two... um, uh, experts uh, on uh, things of finance, the economy. And so we're going to have a great question, uh, conversation about that. I'll tell you more about that in just a second. Um, but I think it's going to be really good. Um, awesome. But there's a lot of other great things come up this week, too. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, it's kind of a big deal, right? It's yeah. Easter week. Yeah. It's like yeah. the biggest uh, holiday in Christianity. Um, lots of stuff going on. So we're going to talk about that. Um, it's weird, too. Yeah. It's, I, I, it's just weird for me to think that we're going to show up on Sunday, like nobody's going to be here. Like that's strange. To yeah. Me. In a normal year, that would cause some panic. I yeah. think. But, uh, and by the way, if you are somebody who has been, um, inviting your friends or family or like that one coworker to Easter to church for years, and they always have a great excuse, <laughs> this is the year, man. They don't have an excuse. No like excuse. Literally this year. turn on your computer yeah. or your, or your TV or something. So make yeah. sure to invite. Yeah. I love that. There are, there is a bunch of awesome stuff coming up though. We got a weekend full of plans. What are you most excited about? I think I know well, the answer. I, I hear something's I, going down at your place, right? Yeah. I, I don't know if I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm a little nervous about it. Kind of terrified. Um, I'm, I'm actually inviting all of you, um, to spend good Friday with me and my family at the Thomas house. You can't come physically. Um, it's going to be super low production. Like it is literally me and my iPhone and my family going live, uh, on, Facebook and Instagram, Mission Live, where, yeah. wherever all people go on the weekend. Facebook, YouTube, Apple TV, yeah. missionaz.org, all yeah. those places. All those places you normally uh, are on the weekend. We're going to be there in our li- in our house, actually at our dining room table, and we're gonna we're gonna celebrate Good Friday, wow. and um, we're gonna celebrate communion together, and uh, again, and yeah. and if, so, if you want to join us for that, and you want to get your family together, we'd love for you to, to be there. Seven p.m. Friday night. It's going to be really short because my littles have a very short attention span. <laughs> and the longer I leave the camera running, the crazier things will get and the more potential it is that I will lose my job. So, so. <laughs> so tune in for the Good Friday celebration and stay for the craziness. Yeah, that's right. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Well, uh, you should just tune in because you never know what's going to happen. It, yeah, it, I'll, I will. It could be wild. I'll definitely be on that. And so we got the Good Friday thing at the Thomas yep. house. I know Anthem is doing like a Good Friday service at eight o'clock on Friday yep. night with their kids. So if you have teenagers or you're a teenager, Make sure you have that bookmarked on your calendar. And then we're also doing something really cool. Um, I uh, learned about this today. Um, our our partner, Orange, has put together a really cool thing called Easter Jam. It's like this interactive family experience. Yeah. And we're going to be dropping that on Saturday uh, morning sometime. So make sure you look out for that. This is going to be um, this is going to be in addition to the regular like Easter Next Gym programming that we're going to have on Sunday morning. Yep. Um, but uh, this is going to be coming, like I said, Saturday. It's this interactive online thing. There'll be like a YouTube link. And it's something for you to sit down with your kids and go through the you know Easter experience together. Yeah, really that's cool. cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to do that as a family as well. I think we're actually going to do it on Sunday afternoon. But um, And that's cool. It's just a great supplement to uh, the weekend experience and um, you know, on Sunday, the, the adult service obviously is targeted towards adults and we have kids programming just as we have the last few weeks for all of our kids, but it's a nice supplement. Uh, some, <coughs> excuse me. Something you can do as a family together. So speaking of Sunday morning, mm-hmm. can you give us any, like, I know there's, you know, planning stuff <laughs> going on. I'm not even right in on some of that stuff. So can you give us a sneak peek know. or like talk about what's I'm going looking on? looking at the guys behind the camera, like, like teaser I don't maybe? know. If, I don't know if we can do that. I will <laughs> say this. I will say this. Um, you should show up early, like get on to the online stream early. Like we tell people show up to church early. You don't yeah. want to miss the beginning. Again, you have no excuse. Sh- show up a little bit early to whatever service you're going to attend. Make sure you get on early because the beginning of the service, I think, is going to be really special. So you don't want to miss All that. Right, so get there early. I guess yeah. that's the that's the sneak peek. Yeah. All right. So about today, what can you tell us about our special guests? Yeah, it's great. Um, I, I we said this a few weeks ago. I'm not a financial expert. Um, uh, I I do know what the scripture says about stewardship, but as far as it relates to looking at the market, um, trying to f- you know, project the future, figure out what you should do about finances, what you should expect. How do you prepare? How do you navigate this? I'm not the right person to ask. And so we, um, fortunately, we have two experts on our board. So today um, on the podcast, you're not just going to get somebody's opinion. You're going to get some wisdom and some marketplace expertise. Um, two guys, Craig uh, Bottleson, who's actually our board chair, 
Um, Craig is a certified financial planner. He works for a big company and because of their compliance, I can't tell you who the company is, but just trust me, you've all heard of it. It's one of the big, one of the big companies, uh, investment companies. Um, he's a certified financial planner. Craig is very successful, works, uh, partners with one of the, um, the leading financial planners in the city and, um, uh, has, has been working in the industry for a long time as has Mark Fiedler. Mark Fiedler is also on our board here at mission, which is awesome to have two financial experts uh, on our board. Um, Mark's in a different way. He's not a, a financial planner, but he's a port portfolio manager and, uh, a, an investment manager. And so his job is sort of to look forward and kind of to analyze, um, forecasting, uh, towards the future. And, um, he's specifically, this is his specific table. He, he's a charter financial analyst. He holds that designation, which is sort of rare. Um, and he works for uh, Audis Asset Management. So they're going to they're gonna jump on here. Uh, we've gotten some questions from you. They're going to answer some of the most common questions they get. And this is what's awesome is for all of our podcast listeners, this is free financial advice. There's lots of people who pay these guys and their companies uh, lots of money uh, to give them advice. And today, uh, because you're one of our listeners, you're going to get some free financial advice about how to navigate uh, the uncertain times that we're in in terms of our economy. So without further ado, here is Mark and Craig. All right. Well, thanks for the uh, introduction. As Joel mentioned, I'm Craig. This is Mark. Uh, both of us serve on the board here at Mission. We also work in finance. So we've spent the last couple of weeks talking with a lot of uh, individuals and families. Uh, everyone's trying to get this thing sorted out. So hopefully we have some good uh, comments for you to give you some perspective on the situation. Before we get to our first question, I got to make a quick comment. Joel invited me to a podcast and uh, I found out it's a video podcast, so I'm a little self-conscious of my uh, my hair because uh, it's been a, it's been a few weeks. Perhaps like some of you, uh, it's been a few weeks since I've had a haircut. So this is my my quarantine hairdo. But I don't have that problem. Don't not an issue. No, not, yeah. not an issue for you. Um, so one of the things that I know a lot of people are wondering as we kind of face this you know massive event, a uh, health crisis around the world which has become an economic event, is this unprecedented? It, it feels so unprecedented for our economy, so many different areas of our economy and industries shutting down overnight. Is this an unprecedented time? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of people are asking that and thinking about that. And um, it is unprecedented from the standpoint of it is government forced. So it's a type of a fiat recession, if you will. It's kind of a, a time where the government is forcing this action for businesses to close down and for things to, um, you know, for people to shelter in place and distance themselves. Um, so from that standpoint, it's unique for sure. Although we have been through periods like this. In 2009, we went through the H1N1 virus, and that outbreak was pretty significant. Uh, 50 million people in the U.S. Um, actually got the H1N1 virus um, and probably 12 to 13,000 passed away from it and that was just in 09. But the difference again was the reaction, the reaction by governments and authorities to shut things down. Um, so that's what makes it really unique this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think one thing that a lot of people are looking at is you know, what are the probabilities that the economy tips into a recession? Um, you know, you're even hearing the word depression kind of thrown out as the unemployment rate is spiking up. I know recently the number of people filing for unemployment the past couple of weeks reached an all-time high for that period of time. So what is the outlook for a recession, a depression? How bad could this thing get for the economy? Um, so this is a demand-driven uh, episode. And uh, again, it's kind of a fiat recession or a dictated recession by the government um, to shut things down. So um, the chances of us going into a technical recession are very high. In fact, we're probably in it right now. And again, you can look at it from a lot of different perspectives, and there's a lot of different definitions to exactly what a recession is, uh, but it will probably meet all of those definitions for sure. I'm thinking we'll have two quarters of negative GDP growth. Um, it's 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 going to be severe uh, for the next two quarters. Now, because it's demand-driven and because it was caused by uh, something the government kind of enforced, the recovery from it may be 
pretty significant as well. When they kind of turn things back on, if you will, we could see the economy pick back up and really get going again. But the longer it stays off, the longer we stay um, away from our jobs and uh, shelter in place and do all of these things, um, the longer it will take the, the economy to recover. Now, will it turn into a depression? Is it the same as what we saw in um, 08, 09 or other periods like that? It's different because it's not the same type of structural financial crisis we went into before. Um, it, we went into this in a pretty healthy place for the economy. Uh, we went into a pretty healthy place for consumers and unemployment was uh, very, very low within the, you know, the, probably the best level it's been in the last 60 years. So we went into it in a pretty healthy place. And then on top of that, um, if you think about the Great Depression, the true depression that we did go through, not the last great recession, if you will, in 08, 09, but actual uh, into the 30s depression, that was caused by four fundamental mistakes that were made. There was a monetary policy mistake that was made by tightening monetary policy and interest rates for the gold standard. There was a regulatory mistake. Regulations were actually tightened during that time um, for fear of what was going on. Uh, there was a fiscal mistake. Taxes were actually raised during that period. And then fourth, we actually went into a trade war. Smoot Hawley created a trade war. So we really kind of made four key mistakes during that period. And we're doing really the opposite right now. We're making significant headway on the monetary policy. We're making significant headway on the fiscal side. In fact, we're putting more money towards this, both fiscal and monetary stimulus, than we did in 08, 09. Um, right. It's dramatic, and it's not just in the U.S., it's global. So it's not just our government and our uh, Federal Reserve, it's, it's globally we're seeing this. And at the same time, we're seeing regulations reduced, more specifically in pharmaceuticals and things like that. Um, but we are seeing regulations come down, and uh, we know that taxes were uh, lower than average heading into it. And the last thing we have really is um, trade issues, and they're actually looking at loosening some of those, some of the issues we have with China heading into it. So all four of those things are addressing this. So that's what tells us the probability of going into depression is very low, very right. low. Yeah, I know one uh, thing as I've been talking with clients, it feels like we're in the valley right now. And yeah. um, there's obviously a lot of uncertainty and we're kind of in uncharted uh, territory for the time being, but the idea that there is another side, it, it's hard to see in the midst of the storm. Uh, but the idea that there is another side, that the effects of this virus uh, directly on people and indirectly on the economy will fade over time. And eventually it's something we'll talk about in the past tense, like we do other uh, world events of you know the last hundred years. So I think there's definitely a historical precedent that over time that markets and economies can recover. But it kind of leads me to the next question, because while we're in this valley and the road ahead of us is a bit uncharted. Mm -hmm. For the average individual or family out there that might be, you know, concerned about their job, uh, concerned about their investments, concerned about their family, what are some things that they can be doing to put themselves in the best financial position through times like this? Are there any yeah. key principles that you think are worth noting? Um, it's a really tough time, especially if you have a small business or are in the service industry or anything like that. It's very, very scary. Um, and there are some things you can do at times like this, and, and I'm sure you'll touch on some of these. But, you know, having that reserve, having that cash reserve is important at times like these. And, and you see now really why it's important. We, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about, hey, you need to have this much in cash to always make sure that – you can cover expenses during times like this, and you don't really think about it until you get into times like this, but um, some type of cash reserve is key. Uh, the other thing to think about is on the investment side, this is part of the business cycle. This is part of an economic cycle, and it, it is naturally occurring um, in the business cycle over time. Now, how it happens each time is different. It could be real estate. It could be financial. It could be technology. It could be oil. It could be whatever causes us to go into this cycle, you know, cycle downturn. But uh, these things do happen. And so trying to remember that and take a long-term perspective, I think, is really important for everyone to step back and, and think about it in those terms. 
especially when they're thinking about their investments. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the kind of the planning side and what they can do for resources. But on the investment side, um, times like this is not the time to make significant changes to your portfolio or to your investments, your allocation in your 401k or your IRA or wherever you might have your savings. Um, if you had an allocation that you were comfortable with and felt good about heading into it, and let's say it's 50% in stock and 50% in bonds and cash, if that's where you were heading into this, when the market is uh, panicked and when investors are panicked and there's a lot of fear out there, that's not the time to um, rebalance and change that allocation. Uh, it actually may be the time to um, bring your positions back up to that level. So let's say you're low on the equity side because stocks have gone down so much. Buying into this fear to bring yourself up to that long-term allocation is probably a wise decision at this point. Right. So if I can summarize a couple uh, things that Mark noted. You know, the first is the importance of cash. And for those of you that, you know, might have listened to Dave Ramsey or, you know, read books or blogs before, the kind of traditional rule of thumb might be about six months of cash reserves. So it's difficult in the midst of the storm to be building cash, but it does kind of reinforce that key principle of why we main, maintain a, a rainy day fund for times like this. Yeah. And then secondly is on your investments, um, assuming they can still be long-term in nature is to not panic and kind of keep things where they are and maybe rebalance or, or bring things back to their target. I guess yeah. would be a few key yeah. principles. Think of it as, as um, good investments are really on sale. Um, if you look out three, five, 10 years and beyond, this is going to be a temporary pain. And uh, so there are opportunities to take advantage of that and, and look at things in those terms rather than looking at the immediate fear in front of you or the panic in the next six to 12 months. Look past that for long-term assets. And for short-term assets, it's different. Those are your reserves and make sure those are built up and where they need to be. Right. And I just made a note here. I uh, wanted to kind of communicate directly to anyone that might be impacted and might be facing a financial burden through this crisis. Uh, there's a lot of help that's available. So uh, you've probably heard of the CARES Act. It's the big stimulus plan that was passed by Congress uh, recently. And there are provisions in that that expand uh, the loan limits against 401ks that allow you to take a larger loan. There's provisions if you're impacted directly by the virus, you can actually take uh, withdrawals from IRAs and avoid the, the typical penalties if you're below a certain age. And again, I would check with your tax advisor on that, but just know that some of the regulations around accessing some of your long-term investments have been relaxed. Um, in addition to small business owners, I'm sure all of you guys are aware of some of the loans and other things that are available through the Small Business Administration. So the SBA.gov is a great uh, resource for uh, loans. They have a payroll loan. I'm, I'm, again, I'm assuming many of you small business owners, if not all of you, have heard about that already. And then the uh, other thing I'd note is a lot of the big banks are offering um, ways to defer bills for a couple of months. So for people that might be directly impacted and their monthly income is lower than it was uh, going into this, there are ways to request a deferment of your loan payment, whether that's your mortgage, your auto loan, or your credit card. And again, those are really recommended for people that are in a position where um, their income has been directly impacted and they might be looking for help in those ways. And then finally, I want to make a plug uh, for a resource that's available. Uh, Mission is one of the key sponsors, along with a couple of our sister churches here in the East Valley. It's a tool called Helper that was set up. Uh, it's an easy tool that you can go online and uh, either raise your hand and say, I'm able to help in one way or another, or you can uh, request if you have a specific need. And the website is Helper. It's spelled H-E-L-P-R. AZ.org. Again, that's H E L P R A Z.org. Yeah, I, I would just mention on that, this is a chance for the church body to do what we're meant to do. Um, and that's a way to do it. That's what the staff here at Mission tried to do. Um, and it's an exciting opportunity for us to step forward in the face of fear um, and, and make a difference. So, yeah, I really would encourage people to go and look at that. 
uh, the last kind of topic I had on there was, um, you know, as a church, we think about being good stewards. And, you know, right now when there's fear, worldly fear about um, the world around us, what does stewardship look like in times like this? How can people um, express their, their faith in times like this? Do you have any comments there? Just when we talk about stewardship here at Mission and, and just as believers, we know that stewardship is about trusting God, um, trusting his plan for our lives. And um, it's easy to go about day-to-day lives when there aren't crises and there aren't things like this going on and forget to trust in him, forget to lean on him um, for what we need. And I think this is an opportunity really for growth for all of us. Um, And uh, so I think taking this opportunity to to really reassess how we lean on God, how we trust him for everything we need um, is, is really important. And being a good steward right now also means uh, stepping forward into this fear um, and being a light in the middle of it and making sure that the community around us, the people around us, see that there's something different. I mean, we're, we're humans and we're going to be emotional and we're going to be scared and all the other things that are going on. But at the end of the day, we have hope. Um, and this is a chance to share that hope uh, with our neighbors and our friends and our communities. So I think that's kind of the lesson we can take from this and stewardship side of it for sure. Yeah, there's a couple uh, Bible verses that come to mind for the church body. Uh, one is that we're commanded to love one another. And it's really times like like this where that is expressed. Um, the other one Again, there are some of you that may be in a position of need right now, and I would uh, direct you back to that website. There are others that may not be impacted. They may be blessed in certain ways. And I want to just highlight a verse out of Corinthians. Um, It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your own heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So I agree with your comments that this might be an opportunity to take a step forward in faith and support some of the ways that we are assisting the church body and we're reaching out to our local community. So did you have any other final questions? comments or questions? No, I think that's it. If, uh, if anyone has questions or specific issues they'd like to talk about or need help with, uh, we'd be happy to do that as well. Yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in uh, to this week's podcast. Hope you guys uh, took a few things away and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.